Welcome back to Sound 101. I'm Andrew from DD Microphones, and we have Ty back in the studio, which means more musical instruments. Today, it's a guitar. Just like that graphic said, today's episode is all about the guitar, and we have Ty back, who is a master sound engineer. You know him from Postmodern Jukebox. And we also have Nathan in studio today, who is a multi-instrument person. That means he can play multiple instruments. And today, he brought his guitar. So Ty, question. Yes. How do you make a guitar? Good question. It actually really depends on what we're trying to go for. Before you reach for a microphone, you need to figure out where this guitar track is gonna go. Is it going to be a solo guitar piece? Is it gonna go against a track with electric guitars? Is it going to be double track, panned hard left and right? And double tracking meaning you do the exact same performance twice, pan them out usually left and right, and you get a thicker, bigger performance. So my question to you is, what are, what are we doing? doing today? Why don't we just start with a simple strumming part? Simple strumming part, okay, great. Do we have any rules that we're gonna play with today? Yes. Maximum two microphones. Maximum two. Two microphones, that's all you're gonna get. So there are a lot of ways to mic an acoustic guitar, but what the first thing I want everybody to do is I want them to actually use their ears. What I'm doing here is I'm going to walk around the instrument, listen with one ear. What I'm trying to find is the balance between bass notes and high frequency. Generally speaking, the closer I'm going to get to the guitar and in the sound hole, the more low end I'm going to get out of the instrument. If I go too close to the hole, it's going to be really boomy and really bassy, which we probably don't want. It's going to be kind of thumpy. If you go too far out, it's going to be nice and clear, but we're going to pick up a lot of the room. So I don't want to go too far out. So what I want to do is I want to try to find the sweet spot of the guitar and where that sweet spot is is where I want to start with the microphone. So let's have you play the guitar for a moment. Okay, cool. So what I've done is I've kind of found a, a spot that I like and we're going to start there. It might not be the spot that I end up at, but this is where I'm going to place to begin with and we'll see what happens. So that's normal. You just okay. walk around with your ear and that's not going to freak anyone out? Yeah, well, it might freak people out, but you got to do it anyway. Okay. You got to do it yeah. anyway, people. So, well, let's actually give this a listen. Nathan, can you give me a couple of strums? So there's a lot of trial and error to this process, yeah? There's a lot of trial and error to the process. There are so many factors to, to think about. Number one is the guitar itself. It's the guitar player, how the performer is striking the instrument. Some players play much harder, some players play very soft. So all that's gonna factor in. Also the sensitivity of the microphone. If it's too, too bright, you're not gonna get the body that you need. And by the time you put it in your track against a keyboard or a snare or anything else like that, it's gonna sound very thin. Conversely, if it's too bassy, it's too boomy, it's not gonna have the cut and it's not gonna have the presence that you're looking for and it's gonna eat up a lot of track. So what we're trying to do is we're just trying to find a nice balance between the low end and the high end. And again, that's all going to depend on what it's up against. If it's gonna go against, let's say, heavy keyboards and there's gonna be a drum track and multiple layers of vocals, then we don't need the guitar to be as wide because we, we're not gonna use the very bottom, we're not gonna hear it, it's going right. against a kick drum, it's gonna get masked. The very high end, it might be masked by cymbals and so forth, so we kinda want to limit the range. We wanna get back to where is it gonna go against. And once we've figured that out, then we can figure out where we wanna start with the guitar. So we have our first mic set up that you want to use. Do you want to use a secondary microphone? If I want to get a slightly fuller sound, if this guitar is going to be eating up more real estate, meaning it's going to be more of a featured part in the recording, then I might add a second microphone to the lower bout of the guitar to get more low end. And sometimes you can split them out left and right. You can pan them however you want, hard if you want. Another thing you can do is you can actually put them together, pan them together at the same spot and then move them into the sound field. And that adds a very thick sound if your phase is aligned or aligned. Is coherent. And if it's not, you're gonna get that You're gonna kind get of a weird phasing kind, kind of, of sound. sound. It's yeah. gonna sound like it's swimming a little bit and it's not the most incredible sound that you've ever heard. So we're about done. Now, when it comes to all this kind of stuff, how much padding is too much padding when it comes to micing instruments? When you put rugs and soundproofing up, soundproofing is trying to kill the sound from leaking into another 
area or preventing sound from leaking into your area. Like all those cars. Like these cars. And some sound proofing would be fantastic. That right? would be fantastic. But as far as uh, sound absorption, we're basically just killing the high end. And if you're doing bass trapping, you're killing the low end. If you remove too much of the high end of the instrument, it's almost like being in a closet. It's very muffled sounding. It's not very bright. You lose some of the presence and some of the air of the instrument. Which is funny enough because so often you see people like, if you're gonna record in your bedroom, do it in your closet. Right, and that's usually because you've got extraneous noises like cats, dogs, significant others walking around, refrigerators, airplanes. You have all sorts of things that you, necess you don't necessarily want in your recording. So you wanna to try to minimize the environment and maximize the sound of the instrument. In a room like this, this is a pretty decent sounding room for not being a purpose-built room. So aside from the soundproofing aspects of it, which we have no control over, it actually sounds pretty good in here. And with an acoustic guitar, which isn't that loud to begin with, you're not really gonna excite the room. So right now with the uh, guitar, I don't think we need to worry about that. Nope, just that, that dump truck right the now. The dump truck, right. That's what keys he in. <laughs> Are they? Fantastic. So it actually sounds like we are all ready to go. So let's just hit record and let's hear a little bit of how this sounds. Wow. I mean, that's, that's pretty damn cool. It sounds amazing in here. We're gonna have a little jam session here in a second, but are there any more tips that we need to think about when we're setting up these mics? Yeah, one important thing, and in fact, the most important thing would be when you're placing the microphones, you always wanna ask the artist and the performer if the mics are ever in their way. Now, they may physically not be in the way, but you wanna make sure that from a space standpoint, if they feel like they're being encroached upon, they will absolutely hold back in the way they perform. And the last thing that you wanna do uh, is to encumber their performance. So after I place a microphone for where I think it should be, my next question is, is it in your way? 100% is it in your way? And if, it's, if it is, then I will move it back because engineering will come second in, in my book every day. Well, it's come to the time of that part of the episode where you guys actually want to hear what this sounds like for more than just 10 seconds. That sounded amazing, Nathan. I, I cannot thank you enough. It's been a pleasure to listening. It seems like it's a simple concept, the micro guitar, but really there's a lot that goes in to something as an instrument that we all see all the time. We see it mic'd all the time, but there's actually been a lot of thought that goes into every single micing that we see. Absolutely, and another thing you guys will notice when you're experimenting at home is moving a, a diaphragm half an inch in every direction, any direction, can drastically change the output of the sound. And now most of the time when you're working and if you're in a high pressure situation, you don't really have a whole lot of time to move stuff around because the most important thing you can do is when the artist is ready to, re to record, hit record because the performance is key. The thing I can't stress enough is get out of the way, trust the microphones, trust your ears, and, and go in and let the instrumentalist and the artist be who they are. And that is now the end of our episode. Thank you, Ty, for coming in and teaching us about all the great things that we really need to think about going into this. What this all is about and what we need to remember at home is when we're doing a recording, even in a living room space, there's a lot of little things you can do that really kind of make your mix better in post. If you wanna do some good stuff right now for yourself, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell for notifications. Follow us on all social media platforms. Drop a comment in the section below and tell us what we need to do our next couple of episodes about. We go down there all the time and we pull out content to do episodes like this one. I'm Edge from DD Microphones. Thank you for watching.